This examination of the coats of skin and the enchantment tool that transforms in Genesis 3 is not affiliated with any religion or doctrine. It's my own work and it's under copyright. In previous videos, we looked at an alternate translation of Genesis 3, verses 1 through 16, which say the Yahweh made an image technology that the hybrids found out would make them appear beautiful, and they began using it along with the humans that were with them. But the Elohim warned about the usage of the shaft of harmful prosperity, saying in verses 14 through 16 that the image is a curse and indicating that they will become infertile eventually. There will be hostility between them and their offspring, and their offspring will desire to rule over the humans. We also talked about the likely reasons for those ramifications of the beauty clope, the fact that there are non-humans using it. So in this video, we'll go over Genesis 3, verses 17 through 24, which tell us the humans and the hybrids became famous once they used the technology, and we'll find more confirmation that the Yahweh are the ones who gave the technology to the humans. So verse 17 in the King James translation says, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree with which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So the word translated as Adam, number 121, we know is the same as word 120, which means human being or humans. The word translated as eaten, number 398, also means use. The word translated as tree, number 6086, also means shaft. The word translated as ground, number 127, also means earth. So verse 17 can also say, And to the humans they said, If you hearken to the voice of the Isha and use the shaft which we commanded you, saying you should not use it, you will curse the earth and cause sorrow if you use it all the, day to, all the days of your life. Then verse 18 in the King James translation says, Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. The word translated as bring forth, number 6779, also means branch. The word translated as eat, number 398, also means devour. And the word translated as herb, number 6212, also means plants. So verse 18 can also say, Thorns and thistles will branch out and devour the plants of the field. Then verse 19 in the King James translation says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. The word translated as bread, number 3899, also means food. The word translated as till, number 5704, also means end. The word translated as return, number 7725, right here, also means pay. The word translated as unto the ground, number 127, also means land. The word translated as for dust, number 6083, also means ashes. The word translated as thou art, number 859, means you. And the word translated as shalt thou return, number 7725, right here, also means give in payment. So verse 19 can also say, And the sweat of your face it will eat as food in the end. You will pay for the land you have taken, and you will be ashes. You will give in payment your ashes. Then verse 20 in the King James translation says, And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. We know the word translated as Adam, number 120, means human being or humans. The word translated as called, number 7121, also means become famous. The word translated as wife, number 802, is Isha, which refers to the hybrid. The word translated as name, number 8034, also means renown. The word translated as Eve, number 2332, 
means life. The word translated as because she was the mother, number 517, also means point of division. The word translated as of all living, number 2416, also means community. So verse 20 can also say, But the humans and the Isha became famous and lived a renowned life at the point of division of the community. So despite the Elohim's warning that using the image technology would eventually cause them to be infertile and they would perish, they used the shaft and became famous. And remember in verse 6, it says the Isha saw that the shaft was a good provision and that it could make them have success. And verses 8 and 9 indicate one of the reasons the Yahweh became famous was they were using the shaft in the enclosure. And in Genesis 6, we're told that Nephilim are the sons of God who marry the daughters of men, and they and their children became men of renown, which is word number 8034, which also means famous, and this word 8034 is the same word used in Genesis 320. So the humans and the Isha became famous and lived a renowned life. So this is talking about the humans and the hybrids. And Genesis 6 goes into more detail about that. It's the sons of God marrying the humans. And in order for the sons of God to marry people on earth, they would have had to come down to earth from heaven. And that's probably why the word translated as giants, number 5303, means Nephilim. And it stems from word 5307, which means to fall or be cast down. And you might remember this word, nafal, number 5307, is the same word used in Daniel 8.10. The army from the stars fell, 5307, to the earth. And that word that means to fall, the word nafal, is the root word of the word that means Nephilim in Genesis 6. And we also previously looked at the lexicon for Genesis 6.4, which says the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. Who were the sons of God who went into the daughters of mankind and beget children with them? So the Nephilim are the sons of God who came down to earth to meet with humans. And we previously pieced together this puzzle between Daniel 8, Revelation 12, Daniel 2, and Genesis 6. So it says, at the time of the little horn, the army of the stars fell to earth, the oppressors. That's Daniel 8. And then it says in Revelation 12, after the war in the sky... The great dragon was cast out to the earth. And then in Daniel 2, at the time of the feet and the ten kings, they shall mingle with themselves with the seed of men. And then Genesis 6, when the humans begin to multiply on the earth, the Nephilim were in the earth in those days, who were the sons of God who went into the daughters of mankind and begat children with them. And they were um, became mighty men, men who were famous. So all four of these verses refer to the same time period. It's the time of the feet of the image in Daniel 2, which we're in now. It started around 1947 and 1945. So it's clear from this that the army of the stars is the oppressors, which is the great dragon, which is the Nephilim, which are mating with humans. And many Bible scholars recognize that much, but the part most of them seem to either miss or ignore is Yahweh's connection in all of this. So we're told this is occurring at the time of the little horn, which we are told comes out of the beast. And Hosea 13 and Revelation 13 together make it very clear that Yahweh is the beast with seven heads and ten horns. And Genesis 11 tells us it was the Yahweh that came down to earth from heaven in verses 6 and 7. And the Yahweh said, let us go down. And Genesis 11 verse 4 also tells us they created the name at that time. Let us make a name. And this occurred at the head of Babylon, which Revelation tells us is the mouth of the beast. And archaeological evidence shows that the name Yahweh first appeared during that time period, extra biblically, any, anything besides the Bible, the first appearance of the name Yahweh um, occurred around 840 BC, just before the first phase of the beast with seven heads arose. So Yahweh is the beast with seven heads that came down to earth at the head and who created the hybrids, which Genesis 3.15 tells us will bruise the head and the heel of the foot. 
Deuteronomy 32 tells us to hear the words of the mouth. That's the head. That's Babylon, the mouth of the beast. It says to hear the words of the mouth, publish the name Yahweh, and attribute to Yahweh the greatness of the Elohim. The word Yahweh stems from word 1961, which means fall out, and that word is compared to word 1933, which also means to fall, and that is compared to word 0183, which means desire, covet, or be greedy. Genesis 11 is clear that it's the Yahweh that came down to earth to confuse the language, and Genesis 6 is clear that the Nephilim are the sons of God that came down to earth to mate with the humans. So we'll add that here. The Yahweh came down to earth at the head of the beast, but Daniel 2 tells us their seed was unable to cleave to the human seed. So Genesis 2 tells us the Yahweh created a hybrid that the humans did cleave to. That is in verse 24. So upon this, the humans will forsake their ancestors at the point of division and will cleave to the Isha, and they will become one flesh. So Genesis 3 verse 1, number 12 here, tells us the Yahweh made the image, which is the coat of light that looks like human skin. Psalm 104, number 7 here, tells us it is the Yahweh who wear the coat of light. And 2 Corinthians number 6 here tells us it is Satan who uses the light disguise. Revelation 13, number 11 here, is very clear that the image was made for the outward appearance of the beast, which is Yahweh. So the Nephilim are the sons or the descendants of God, and they came down to earth to mate with humans, and they and their hybrid children became famous. And Genesis 3.15 tells us this occurs at both the head and the feet. In other words, the hybridization project occurs at the beginning of the beast system and also at the end of it, which we're in now. So Genesis 3.20 is telling us that despite the Elohim's warnings of eventual infertility, the humans began using the shaft anyway and became famous. And that explains why it's called the shaft of harmful prosperity. They become successful or prosperous when they use it, but eventually it will make them infertile because they are unknowingly mating with non-humans. So it interferes with the human lineage. In other words, the growth of the human ancestral tree. And that explains why it says they sewed together a branch of the fig tree when they began using this technology. So in exchange for their fame and success, they sacrificed their descendants. In other words, they sacrificed their children for fame and fortune. They used the shaft that made them appear beautiful. And verse 20, the humans in the Isha became famous and lived a renowned life at the point of division of the community. Then verse 21 in the King James translation says, And unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed in them. And the lexicon format of this verse is slightly different. It says the Yahweh Elohim made garments of skin. And then the word 121, which is Adam, and is the same as word 120, which means human being or humans. So the Yahweh Elohim made garments of skin for the humans, and then word 802, which we know is the word Isha, which refers to the hybrids, and the last word in this verse means where. So verse 21 says, And the Yahweh Elohim made coats of skin for the humans and the Isha to wear. So now we understand what the coats of skin are. It is... Number 18 here, the strange flesh. Number 17, the coat of light. Number 14, the attire of the breathing substance of human bodies. And number 19 here, it makes clear in verse 21 that it is the Yahweh who gave the coats of skin to the humans and the Isha. And that's also confirmed when we understand number 12 here, that it was one of the Yahweh using the image disguise who told the Isha about the shaft of harmful prosperity. We are also told the image was made by the Yahweh. That's number 10 and 11, both Genesis 3 and Revelation 13. 
And number six here, it was the Yahweh who were using the image technology first. So if we were to leave the King James translation the way it was in Genesis 2 and 3, it would not make sense because it says the Yahweh forbid them to use the image technology, but then turned around and gave them the coats of skin, which the rest of the text tell us is the image technology. But again, number eight here, Deuteronomy 32 and Jeremiah 8, clarify for us that the texts were changed later and the name Yahweh was inserted where it didn't belong, giving Yahweh credit for what the Elohim did. So Genesis 3 verse 3 says it was the Elohim who forbid the use of the technology. And verse 21 tells us clearly that it was the Yahweh who gave the technology to the humans and the Isha. So there can be no mistake about that. It's confirmed throughout the text. Then verse 22 says in the King James translation, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. We know the word Lord, number 306a, is Yahweh. The word translated as God, number 430, is Elohim. The word translated as man, number 120, means human being or humans. The word translated as is become as one, number 259, also means anyone. The word translated as good, number 2896, also means benefit. The word translated as evil, number 7451, right here, also means favored. The word translated as tree, number 6086, also means shaft. The word translated as life, number 2416, also means sustenance. The word translated as eat, number 398, also means use. And the word translated as forever, number 5769, also means long duration. So verse 22 can also say, but the Yahweh Elohim said, Behold, the humans will cause anyone to know the benefit of being favored, and now lest they put forth a hand and take the shaft and use the sustenance to live for a long duration. And then verse 23 in the King James translation says, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. The word translated as till, number 5647, also means serve. The word translated as ground, number 127, also means land. And the phrase, from whence he was, is not in the Hebrew. So verse 23 can also say, Therefore the Yahweh Elohim sent them forth from the Garden of Eden to serve the land that was taken from them. Then verse 24 in the King James translation says, So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. We know the Yahweh are a group, Genesis 11, 6, and 7. So the word he in Genesis 3, 24 should be they. And the lexicon format is slightly different in this verse. It says they drove out mankind. Then the word translated as east, number 6924, also means ancient times. So it says they drove out mankind in ancient times from the Garden of Eden. And angelic beings dwelled there. And then the word translated as flame, number 3858, also means enchantment. The word translated as sword, number 2719, also means tool. So the enchantment tool. And then the word translated as turn, number 2015, also means transform. So the enchantment tool that transforms. And then word 8104 means keep watch. And then the word translated as way, number 1870, also means actions. The word translated as tree, number 6086, also means shaft. And the word translated as life, number 2425, also means sustenance. So kept watch over the actions of the sh shaft of sustenance. 
And notice the word translated as life in the Strong's Concordance, number 2416, also means sustenance. So verse 24 can also say, They drove out the humans in ancient times, and angelic beings inhabited the Garden of Eden and kept watch over the enchantment tool that transforms and the actions of the shaft of sustenance. And Isaiah 3 verse 20 also refers to the image technology as an enchantment. It says their beauty will be gone, the attire of the breathing substance of human bodies, the serpent charming enchantment. So there's that word enchantment again. So we'll add that description here for number 20. Genesis 3 24 refers to the image technology as the enchantment tool that transforms. So an alternate translation of Genesis chapter 3 can also read, Now the image was more devious than any sustenance of the territory which the Yahweh God had made. And they said to the Isha, Indeed the Elohim said, You can eat of all the trees of the garden. And the Isha said, The image is a reward. The trees of the garden we may eat, but of the reward of the shaft which is in the midst of the enclosure, the Elohim said, If we use it or are stricken by it, we will perish. And the image said to the Isha, You shall not surely die, for the Elohim know that in the day you use it, then your appearance shall blossom, and you shall be as the Elohim, and be perceived beautiful and favored. And when the Isha saw that the shaft was a good provision, and that he or she was pleasant to the eyes, and it was a shaft to be desired to make one have success, he or she took of the reward and did use it, and gave also to the humans with him or her, and they did use it. And the appearance of them both blossomed, and they learned to distinguish who was bare, and they sewed the fig branch together and made themselves bound on armor. They heard the sound of the Yahweh Elohim going into the enclosure, the wind. In those days the humans and the Isha hid their appearance like the Yahweh Elohim through the shaft of the enclosure. The Yahweh Elohim became famous, and the humans considered why. They considered the sound they heard in the enclosure and were afraid when the nakedness was hidden. They considered how to explain the nakedness, and they used the shaft they were commanded not to use. The humans asked the Isha that was given to be with them if he or she would give them the shaft to use. The Yahweh Elohim told the Isha what it does, so the Isha said, The image deceives and let them use it. To the Yahweh, the Elohim said, The image you made is a curse. It will cause a mount of appetite in the land, and their belly will carry dust if they use it all the days of their life. It will put hostility between the Isha and their offspring, and their offspring will bruise the head and bruise the heel of the foot. And to the Isha, they said, It will greatly multiply the pain of pregnancy and pain when you bring forth children, and they will desire to rule over the humans. And to the humans they said, If you hearken to the voice of the Isha and use the shaft which we commanded you, saying you should not use it, you will curse the earth, earth and cause sorrow if you use it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles will branch out and devour the plants of the field, and the sweat of your face it will eat as food in the end. You will pay for the land you have taken, and you will be ashes. You will give in payment your ashes. But the humans and the Isha became famous and lived a renowned life at the point of division of community, and the Yahweh Elohim made coats of skin for the humans and the Isha to wear. But the Yahweh Elohim said, Behold, the humans will cause anyone to know the benefit of being favored, and now lest they put forth a hand and take the shaft and use the sustenance to live for a long duration. Therefore the Yahweh Elohim sent them forth from the Garden of Eden to serve the land that was taken from them. So they drove out the humans in ancient times, and angelic beings inhabited the Garden of Eden and kept watch over the ent enchantment tool that transforms and the actions of the shaft of sustenance. So this is a work in progress, and it may need to be reevaluated later. But the main points in Genesis 3 that are confirmed throughout the text are number 11 here, the Yahweh made the image, and number 7 and 8, the Yahweh used the image to deceive, and number 4, the serpent is the image, and number 12 and 19, the Yahweh gave the coats of skin to both the Isha and the humans, and the Elohim forbid its use because non-humans are using it to interfere with the human lineage, and they are rendered infertile eventually. 
So that's it for this week. If you want more information, the whole series playlist, Bible's Countdown to the Asteroid, is linked here, and there are several other videos linked in the description below. Just click on Show More to open up more links on this subject. And if you like this video, please consider providing support. These presentations are funded by viewers like you, so I just want to say thank you to everyone who's making this research possible. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.